So all uh, presentations are here, and when it will be turned, I sent it to you already. Okay, then let me bring it up so that we do not waste time on. Uh, And uh, let me briefly explain what is going, what uh, Levi will be presenting. Uh, we, we can use it next year, uh, or you, you can introduce this, uh, which competition you are participating, right? So there is a local conference uh, presenting on which, uh, about this time, one can get a uh, check to present the same uh, stuff on the uh, Chem American Chemical Society National Meeting. And this year is a little too late, but next year, <laughs> <we're> in, uh, <laughs> well, maybe maybe Daniel knows how to set me post deadline, but uh, <laughs> it's tomorrow at 8.30, yeah. so that so would be pretty. There's no close. deadline up to me? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't scare me with that. <laughs> I hate deadlines. So it should the microphone. Oh, uh, the the microphones are somewhere on the, on the top. But it looks like you're... no, no. Uh, the way to check microphone is to oh, okay, and see okay. if it goes up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so basically I'm trying to study the grafting of a diazonium on the surface of silicon. So after the record in our group, basically I was trying to study the grafting of a diazonium on the carbon nanotube surface. But since the carbon nanotube is very stable, it is not reactive, so my computation work does not work. So that's really the way switch to the silicon surface. This is a rectangular, a very old paper. Uh, basically, this is the surface, and the surface silicon is passivated by hydrogen. And this is a diazonium molecule. So this is a cation, and this is anion. Uh, under some certain conditions, there will be charge transfer from the surface to the molecule. And uh, because of this charge transfer, the surface is now positively charged. And this diazonium cation is not uh, radical. So since it is radical, it is very reactive. So we see the breaking of nitrogen and carbon bond. In this way, we have a complete nitrogen-2 molecule. And uh, we also have a phenol radical. And on the surface, this hydrogen can become a, a proton. So uh, the proton can react with the uh, anion to form a, like, like here, to form a HBF4 molecule. <laughs> so right here we have two kinds of radicals. On the surface we have a silicon radical, and here we have a phenol radical, and this radical can just combine with each other. In this way we have the functionalization like the diazonium. So what makes the uh, silicon on the surface a positive radical in this? Oh, because there is a charge transfer. Huh. I just had a question about like the brackets in, in the middle run. Usually I thought the brackets in, in um, or, like whenever you mention organic chemistry, we like, meant resonance structures. But I guess for this one, it doesn't mean resonance structures, right? I guess this is just like, some intermediate step. Oh, it's just, oh, okay, okay, sorry. Thank you for clearing that up. So here is my model. So the surface I choose is also silicon mama one. And this is a uh, azonium cani, and this is bromide. So I cannot remember the distance, but I guess probably it is like 4.5 angstrom for the molecule use of this. And uh, I first run just geometry optimization, and then I run room temperature, ab initio molecular dynamics. The reason I run uh, room temperature, ab initio molecular dynamics, 
is just to sample initial geometries from the trajectory. Uh, so like this is the one trajectory I select from the room temperature and empty trajectory. So this is uh, uh, at 800 from per second. Um, in the next step, I use this geometry as input for high temperature AIMD calculations. And also, in the AIMD calculations, I keep all these atoms fixed, but also uh, allow the very top atoms to relax. So this is a... Uh, uh, so what, what are the challenges? Why simulation is needed? Or what is not clear with this reaction? I guess they have some experimental evidence for the proposed mechanism, but I guess there is no competition or study on it. Uh, even if we do see challenge right now, we need to make up one. Uh, just formulate what, what is not clear or what um, right now, no one of us know what are the results, but you can uh, right now declare main result and tell that absence of knowledge about and it is a challenge. So like, uh, would it happen at uh, low temperatures? Would it be like sufficient activation or uh, how much uh, this um, function group will affect our current properties? Uh, it, it's it's like we do it because it's we are curious and because we want to justify methods. But for readers, it's so much easier to follow the pattern of like here is the goal, and we use different tools to achieve it. So what is AIMD? Just every initial reactor names. Oh, okay. So this is my some profile from high temperature and any calculations. So for the high temperature, here we use 2,000 Kelvin. So I guess the red here it represents the distance between bromine and the hydrogen. So as we can see. Okay, so first the blue is the distance between carbon and nitrogen. So the first event is the uh, uh, breaking of the nitrogen and carbon bond. So roughly about 200 of 100 from the second, we see the breaking of the carbon nitrogen bond. And as time goes by, this distance become ridiculous. And uh, at around I mean, 800 from the second, we see the formation of uh, H-bromide, and actually this hydrobromide bond is quite stable because we can see this is a oscillation with time. This is the signature of stable chemical bond. Yeah. Uh, total energy before and after, uh, if, if you optimize the reactant and product, uh, which is more stable? Can one tell that it is exothermic and product is more stable? Yeah, you can check that. So finally, around 1200 from seconds, we can see the freedom group is not attached to the second surface. And also, because this is high temperature calculations, so there is lots of kinetic energy in the system. So we see the uh, we see the reconstruction of the surface. Yeah. High temperature means uh, how much? Two thousand Kelvin. Two thousand Kelvin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is bulk silicon, right? Silicon one one. Yeah. Yeah. I I know that it around something one thousand one hundred degrees Celsius. I'm sorry. 800 to 1000 degrees Celsius, 
silicon 111 reconstructed and it, the structure is completely different uh, i'm not sure that is applicable here if there is applicable then what would be the position of that uh, functional group like in each editor or somewhere else yeah we see some reconstruction over the surface like here we see the breaking of silicon silicon bond right uh -huh. and also there is some hydrogen migration the reason we cannot see any change because we fix the atom of the silicon for air is it clear which kind of reconstruction is it seven by seven or oh what, what, what we bring up any to serve as a translator okay. it's a very colloquial language mm -hmm. so um in surface chemistry for surfaces without hydrogen which may disturb thermally the diamond-like structure of silicon is reconstructed not arbitrarily but in high symmetry pattern periodic pattern on the surface the period of the surface uh, unit cell is so much bigger than the unit cell that we use in in these simulations uh, what fatima is mentioning she's the best expert in uh, the room and probably on the, on the whole yeah, university I one it's one. It is um, it is like seven by seven uh, unit cells. It's a, you, to reproduce this. The word reconstruction when she is using means not arbitrary reconstruction, deviating from crystalline, but it is highly periodic. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me translate. Her question is like: Would it be reasonable for higher temperatures to start not from uh, crystalline covered by hydrogen, but from uh, uh, so-called uh, reconstructed surface. We, we, we cannot do it. Uh, it will be extremely expensive computation, but uh, it's a good point to address. Yeah. 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 Am I translating? Fatima? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. A possible way, probably we, we shouldn't change anything in calculations, just keep doing as we do, but uh, bring up some verbal hand waving argument so that um, we are ramping up temperatures so quickly that uh, there is no time for construction. Mm -hmm. Or maybe some other intellectual argument. I'm not telling you that this one is the best. And maybe Fatima can su suggest something. So uh, reconstructions that you are telling about appear after annealing when you heat up and then cool down and uh, keep it in vacuum, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And if, if there is a uh, if it will be residual hydrogen around, it will distort this reconstruction back to this uh, hydrogen termination. Yeah. So, so what happens if it is seven by seven reconstruction? Then there are there are two sides on ported side and unported side. And there are six atoms, that aratons, six aratons on each side, and mm, each aratom has one dimension. So this functional group can occupy one of the dangling points. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. Just What's the time, time scale for this kind of reconstruction? Time scale? Yeah. Uh, time scale, I don't know. <laughs> Days or hours. So it's. Uh, it, it, it doesn't mean immediate implications. Maybe an, another paper start the same simulation from reconstructed surface. Oh, time means just to I applied um, direct heat, uh, heat thing through direct current, and right away it come. Oh no! After uh, applying heat, I was waiting like uh, thirty minutes, and then I checked the surface. I saw. Okay, here we are speaking about like femtoseconds, picoseconds. It will not uh, happen at this uh, ah. And also, so if we, you have the... I'm sure something will happen, probably not uh, like a very nice surface, but positions must be changed. Yes, but you already mm -hmm. like alluded that part of it is frozen. So only the top atom, mm -hmm. atoms. Surface. Because the surface atoms uh, have dangling bolts, so they will be constructed. I thought there was hydrogen on the surface. 
Yes. 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 Uh, where does the bromine come from? Sorry. Um, I'm just looking at the reaction scheme they showed in the first slide, and I don't know where bromine is from. Just part of the this kind of a molecule. Oh, it's part of the molecule. Bromine is the negatively charged, and the molecule is positively charged. Boron. Uh, is it a boron? It's bro. It's boron. Mm -hmm. Bromine on this. Um, page. I, I, I thought boron was BB. The, the first page. Oh, yeah. yeah. It should be uh, bromine. Halogen. Like under chlorine in the periodic table. Oh, great. Fluorine, chlorine, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. Um, But there's, he's just saying they used BF4 in the, in the first one. The so it's different. It's from what you said. Wait, 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 wait. The first page is from the paper. The yeah. only difference is. Uh, so the paper is boron, tetrafluoride. Yes, but you can choose whatever and I want. It will. Yeah, so it's different it. experimental setup. Yeah. Okay. The first page. Yeah, uh, we are missing. Uh, Green. Oh. Green weight here. <laughs> um, the schedule was scrambled. They didn't send uh, additional invitation. Uh, there is a, a, a project that uh, a lot of you may witnessed or participated that. Uh, this functional group, this compound of the diazonium salt, is actively used to functionalize carbon materials, like carbon nanotubes. And uh, the one of the discoveries that uh, Yuvan is presenting right now, that this functional group is uh, really able to influence in positive sense properties, not only of carbon nanotubes, but other materials as well. So in some sense, it is not, well, from one of the angles, it's not study of uh, silicon, it's more study of the diazonium salt as it can uh, functionalize other materials. What did you call the salt, sorry? Huh? What did you say the salt was, sorry, diazonium? Diazonium. So if you if you see what uh, you want to show, it's a uh, uh, phenyl, benzene ring, uh, connected to two nitrogens. Uh -huh. And if you construct it this way, it will be charged. Charge. Okay. And in order to compensate charge, you need additional anion. So this cation is anion, so it is a salt. And when you uh, try to like evaporate, su su sublime, deposit, mm -hmm. it decomposes and actively uh, tries to bring phenyl group to anything. So can you call it like a, like a sweater ion, I guess? Or no? Ah, uh, this should probably have two tails. Oh, which tails! Are yeah, that's right. Far that's enough from each other. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's not ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, just when you have observed the functionalization of phenyl groups on the surface. So next time I just want to compare how much the electronic structure can be changed by the surface uh, functionalization. So I create four models. Let's say the surface is as weighted by hydrogen only by one phenyl group. And then this one, half of the surface is as weighted by the phenyl group. And here all surface item is as weighted. So this is the uh, sensitive states. So this is for hydrogen only. This is for one uh, surface ligand, half surface ligand, and the fully hydrogen ligand. So as we can see, the top three looks very similar. But I guess the biggest difference is for the fully hydrogen surface. Especially in the homo, I guess. So we can see the contribution from habit. So did you plot this directly from the out car or did you shift it at all? I shifted it. You shifted? Yeah. So where's your homo luma gap? So for this one, for top three, it's about 0.7 the Okay. For this one, it's like point. 0.45, something like that. So the, the top three are open and the bottom one is kind of getting close. Yeah. 
I guess one reason is because the phenol group is kind of bulky, so there might be some reconstruction on the surface, and also there might be some hyper stacking. This is a this is a water spectrum. Huh. So, in spite of the uh, almost closed gap, the absorption is in the silicon silicon transitions. Yeah. So, this phenyl group do not uh, contribute to absorption. They might be after the reactor. Mm -hmm. Do when they do carbon do they see a change in absorption as well? Um, a what? Oh. It's a whole business and the whole, uh, well, not whole, but half of doctoral thesis of uh, Brandon Gifford. I thought that was emission. Absorption as well. So there, there are uh, additional transitions, optically active transitions due to this group. And uh, the transitions for, I'm not sure if an analogy is possible, but uh, nature of transitions is not involved with this phenyl group, but it uh, localizes the bulk states Near, near this group and uh, changes the transition energy. Okay, I guess this is my last slide. I guess in future I will do some night bad couplings for these models. Okay. Um, why surface? Why not quantum dot or nano wire? I guess from from point of view of starting chemical reaction surface as well, it's much easier. Okay, okay, so it's just a question of how easy. But uh, from point of view of applications, if one is looking to um, well, right now the interest was only in reaction, but if you look forward to applications uh, and possible uh, change of electronic and optical properties, would they be more proclaimed, declared on the uh, nano wires or quantum dots? Yeah. And maybe there, there, could, there, there should be uh, experimental works on spectra for the new functionalized quantum dots or mm -hmm. new fun functionalized nanowires. Mm -hmm. By the way, then one can uh, combine this project with nanowires project mm -hmm. and uh, electronic states localized on the phenyl will have no dispersion, will be like flat, mm -hmm. and silicon states will have dispersion. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, just, it's just a fantasy, but uh, part of the issue. Okay. But uh, let's thank everyone. Is any, any, anyone else coming? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, then we can hold you. Okay, I'll hold. <coughs> okay. Sure, you you yep. Okay. Because uh, what Fatima is going to present will be definitely longer. <laughs> it will be yeah. dessert at the end of our meeting. Right? <laughs> One needs to come with a screwdriver. Yeah. <laughs> it, it could be open yet. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, uh, what I am currently trying to look at is the effects of an electric field on like a full perovskite solar cell. Uh, so we've got a electron transport material, which is a titanium dioxide and a hole transport material, which in this case is spiromotad. Um, and so it's just kind of a 
first level approximation, I guess what we're doing is, uh, I, I already have the ground state calculated for this for uh, like a spinless system and a uh, non-collinear spin system. So this would be the, you know, just bare bones, you know, ground state stuff for the spinless system. Um, so let's see. Uh, so I guess this plot here is showing the projected uh, electron occupation, I guess, uh, sorted by the orbital. So like each one of these is a different orbital. And this is showing you the occupation um, projected onto the z-axis. So, you know, kind of going through the solar cell. And so there's these lines kind of drawn in here to uh, kind of show you, you know, whether or not it's localized on the perovskite or on the spiromatad or on the titanium dioxide. And so, um, just as the, okay, so I guess the main thing we're trying to look at here, what's that? Which one is the homo and the homo man? Uh, homo lumo. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, over here, that's these guys and then these ones. Oh. Um, so the, I guess the main effect that we're looking at um, is the, uh, the energetic reorganization of the band structure due to the electric field. And then, it, it, so that's really what this is showing here. I mean, we're not looking at any of the other effects that the electric, will, the electric field will have just yet. Um, I'm still trying to collect data and VASP is not wanting me to do that. Um, so what we did here is uh, we, okay, so we took this data and then we averaged it out to figure out, you know, where the, you know, the expectation value for the electron position would be in each orbital. And so that's what these dots are all representing. So blue is with no electric field turned on. Can yeah. you play a picky joke? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the goal? What was the motivation to uh, launch the studies? <laughs> <laughs> so when solar cells are actually used, um, they're going to be connected together so that you can create, you know, a larger voltage than any one solar cell will be able to produce on its own. And so that is going to create an intrinsic electric field that will be acting on the solar cell. And so we're essentially looking at how we could sort of tune that to get the, I guess, uh, maximum performance out of like a solar panel. So I have a question off of that. Yep. Would this effect be seen if you only had a single cell in your cell? Like if you take one cell out, would you still see electric field as it has a load on it? Or is it intrinsic to taking a ton of them together and then having a device? Or is it intrinsic to this the architecture in and of itself? should be definitely predominantly due to the architecture. Um, let's see whether or not there is any in the other cases. So I would think that you, if you had a singular solar cell, you could design it in such a way that you wouldn't really have an electric field acting on it if it was just that one cell but while it was operating. charge separation? So you it, okay, you'd have, have one electrons, electrons worth, I guess. <laughs> right, so it's but you should be able to, as soon as that escapes, you could theoretically design it so that there's no more electric field acting on the uh, on sure, the solar but cell. To do that is part of the right to say. So this is kind of studying the intrinsic effects of splitting a charge, like splitting make a positive and negative charge carrier. Mm -hmm. What will it do? And if it does stuff bad, then you can like propose how to fix it. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Um, so what was I talking about? Uh, Technical details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So with these, uh, what we're doing is we're, you know, averaging out the, um, the position of the electron in the Z dimension here. And then we're looking at how the electric field reorganizes the uh, the orbitals energetically speaking, I guess. Um, so, uh, 
How should I? So what is the Hamiltonian of field to matter interaction? What's that? What is the Hamiltonian of field to matter interaction? Um, you just want me to like write the equation, I guess. I, you, you can write the equation, or you can just quickly tell one or two words. Uh, so I, we're basically treating it kind of like a dipole. Um, so mm -hmm. if the uh, if the average position is somewhere over here, then it will shift the energy up with a positive field, and if it's somewhere over here, it will shift the energy down with an electric field, and vice versa, I guess. But so like field, the, field to matter interaction are considered in dipole approximation. Yes. Yeah, so the farther away it is from the center, the more dramatic the effect of the electric field will be on that orbital. Which, yeah, you look like you have kind of the same issues as I do with that, I guess. It's kind of a... Where is it periodic? Uh, so then yes. How, why would you say the center of your cell? So it's periodic. Because you can just shift your cell and then your center changes, yeah. then the effect goes away. Yeah. So, okay, so it's periodic, you know, like, as it's shown here, like up and down and then in and out of the screen. I mean, it's technically also periodic, you know, left and right, but the uh, there's more vacuum that way. So the effects okay. from up here shouldn't be having an impact down here. I mean, it's we're cutting it a little bit close, but... I mean, for the most you part. have, like... 10 angstroms between if you go from one end to the other. Oh. Because you're about five angstroms when you first see your first peak. Yeah. And then you go to like 35, so it's about 10, right? Yeah, somewhere in there. I mean. oh. Yeah, so that's, I guess, what I have at the moment for that. Um, and then if you look at the non collinear spin, um, Qualitatively, it looks about the same. I mean, you know, you're not getting any drastic changes that are just jumping out of nowhere with this. Um, so, yeah, I guess I don't know if there's really too much to talk about with this at the moment, but I was able to get non collinear spin to uh, work for the ground state at least so far. Um, so, uh, I was just toying around with it, I guess, and I figured out uh, where where the HOMO and the LUMO would actually cross, like where that electric field threshold would be. And so that's what I plotted here in the spinless case. Um, I don't know, just it seemed like a good point to plot. I guess I don't really have anything to talk about too much with this at the moment. I mean, I'm still trying to actually get some meaningful data. Um, and then same thing in the non-collinear spin case. Uh, you kind of get more exaggerated, exaggerated effects, I guess. But I mean, again, it's still in too early of a stage to really make any like actual claims on this. Um, and uh, I tried to make a movie of my molecular dynamics runs that are failing to uh, see if any of you knows how to fix this. So essentially, the perovskite is just frozen in place every time I try to do molecular dynamics, and then these two are you know doing stuff, and then they just go crazy. And so they disattach him? Uh, yeah, they end up like shooting through the boundaries, and that's weird. Because like it should turn into a like a horrible mess right at the end, huh? Yes. I mean, you can kind of see it starting to right along here, but basically the uh, my MD runs all look like this no matter how I try to do it. Where you know the uh, the HTM and the ETM are both you know acting like they're at the appropriate temperature, but the perovskite is essentially frozen. And then they'll end up just wigging out and you going through the periodic boundaries. just not moving very much away. It, it does move a little bit. So you not you run this calculation for all atoms moving. Yes. Right? You not freeze, because you can right. freeze some atoms. Right, but I'm not trying to do that. I mean, these are all heavier, these are all significantly heavier atoms than, you know, the ones that are appearing here and here. So they should move less, but... What temperature are you starting them at? Uh, so I'm running the molecular dynamics at 300 Kelvin. So when you when you're heating, what's that? When you heated, yeah, your system. What was your beginning temperature? Zero. And then three hundred was that. Yeah, yeah. So I go at zero to three hundred, and then I try to run MD at three hundred, and MD is where it wakes out. Did you do uh, like stabilization period? Because when depending on how your input is, mm -hmm. if you start at zero and end at three hundred, yeah, it will 
slowly increase the energy. Right, yeah, that's what happens. The temperature just keeps going up and up and up in the MD. But then if you stop at 300, it's not actually equilibrated to 300. So you're saying do like... Then you need to do a second calculation to equate. Yeah. Start at 300, end at 300. Another heating one? So that... Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you, in the beginning, it would do this. Yeah. And then at the end, it should have like an envelope function Mm -hmm. to like get close to 300. Yeah. So it might be that your initial conditions have all the kinetic energy in the light elements. Yeah. And your heavy elements have not really been able to equivalent to 300 kk. Uh, okay, kick. yeah, because I haven't tried to do a separate heating job at yeah. 300 degrees. I've tried to like increase the length and you know, like send it back in from an MD job. And Yeah, if you increase the length, it just heats it slower. Right, yeah. Well, that's what I found. It depends on your settings, mm-hmm. but I think if you take the one from Dimitri's bin, it takes the number of steps yep. times however, like the amount you need to move and as a, like a linear yeah, it's like, change. Yeah, it's every NSW or every N block steps, it'll give it a thermal kick yeah, over the, but it you know, equally really divided over that NSW steps. But here is a conceptual problem when you deal with this kind of systems, right? Because mm-hmm. you have so many, so big difference between vibration of frequencies of your organic molecules versus inorganic molecules. Yeah. Those solid ones, right? But when you apply classical uh, heat, heating means classical thermodynamics, right? You're kind of thinking that you put this energy, mm-hmm. KT, with your whatever temperature, equally distributed over all degrees of freedom, over all frequencies, yeah. right? But we understand that those which uh, which are solid ones, right? So for them, this classical approach is okay, mm-hmm. but the soft guys, they actually should be treated quantumly. Okay. And Kind of, in other words, this energy should not be equally distributed over all atoms. Is there a way for me to do that in VASP? No, there's no <laughs> way. Okay. Yeah. Nothing yeah. 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 calculation. So I, I'm yeah. saying there is a conceptual kind of, problem yeah. with this approach because you kind of because you 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 put you in a classical limit you put you kind of take your energy divided over number of atoms, right? And this would be roughly over, over oscillators. Uh, and roughly speaking, the average energy for each oscillator would be this amount, right? Yeah. But in reality, this approach will be applicable only for your middle part. Yeah. And for the other ones, they should actually get only the energy equals to their H nu, which should be in a level of 1,000 something 500, which is much lower than KT, right? So it means mm-hmm. you should not really add any energy to the soft atoms. At that conditions, because they 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 can get only this quantized energy, not classical way. Yeah. And but because you treat them equally, that's probably makes kind of oversaturating the energy to this. Like you put like real energy which your organic molecules get is not really three hundred uh, k, right? Mm. It's if you recalculate, then it would be much bigger, and that actually causes the breaking of the bonds. Okay. Uh, the question, practical question, can we do something, can we do something in the past with this? Um, I don't know, I, I, technically. I, not that I'm aware Another of, way you can, f- or you can do, organics. you can, you can yeah, make organics, tricks, yeah. you can make tricks, freeze some molecules, heat and then heat the and guy. And then during molecular dynamics, unfreeze. So yeah. let heat slowly dissipate from uh, mm-hmm. semiconductor to, to organics. Or you can freeze everything except the carbons which are really involved in a connection. Mm-hmm. I mean, freeze organic without carbons or whatever, oxygens or whatever, are uh, getting into the coordinated bonds, right? Connecting with your surface. Uh, so they can adjust a little bit. And then maybe freeze all other guys and let on the organic to move <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but something, something creative has to be done. Yeah. I would try and heat it for a long time with initial and final the same temperature. Okay. Yeah. Because what might be happening is, as Svetlana saying, you might not put any energy into the graph sky. Well, right. That's what it looks like is happening. And I guess I just wasn't, because like I tried to just kick up the time. I figured that was the obvious solution to that is just let it run for longer. Because once like, you get an MD, it's not monitoring the temperature anymore. Right. And it, every time it just starts to go crazy on me, like it just goes up and up and up. 
That's, uh, I don't really have much in the way of data right now. I'm still trying to get things to work. So that's all I got. Okay. Good thing, Clinton. So as Dimitri was talking earlier, uh, this is part of a competition tomorrow for a travel grant. They, this year they have two $500 travel grants and then two $300 travel grants. Um, and this is what... And no 500 Two, Ooh, 500, two, oh. 300. Oh, I see. Uh, and I think there's only six of us competing. So hopefully I come back with good news instead of oh, I'm in the bottom of the record. So this so, is. So six and you get four awards, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's a good chance, <laughs> but you never, well, I would say you never know. You never know. So I will get 15. Ooh, so and it's sharp, right? With questions. So, uh, I think it's five minutes after with questions. Like 15, and five. done, and then five. Okay. Uh, and then this is their uh, judging criteria. Uh, I just put it up so that you guys would have some background on what I should talk about instead of just give a presentation. And then, yeah. Um, so, uh, oh, that's going to. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about computational insights into uh, the manipulation of the ground in the excited state of iridium complexes via benzoannihilation. Um, just to get off, I kind of want to explain what benzoannihilation means. It uh, is a fancy word to say extend the pi conjugation of a system, um, which we will talk to, I'll show an example shortly. Uh, but before I get into the nitty-gritty of my research, I would like to go over some background and get some motivation. Um, so let's look at some applications of iridium-3 uh, organometallic complexes. So I'm sure everyone has heard about these because most uh, applications are very widespread. So the first is uh, for lighting, organo, uh, organic lighting diodes. Here's an example of uh, architecture of it. And uh, this portion here is where the uh, iridium complex sits. And that is what emits the light. All the rest of this is to have charge carriers be injected. And then they can recombine on the iridium complexes. Uh, so I will, here's an example. So this is from a paper. And they are trying to uh, tune properties of the organometallic complex to make their lighting and diodes uh, perform better. And what they did, they uh, did functionalization with uh, fluorine and methyl, methoxy to try and tune the uh, emittive where they emit. The next application is uh, low power up conversion converters. So this is an application where when you shine light, we want to have the emission above the light absorbed. And here is an example of it. So you have a green light, and then uh, when you have the up converter, it turns blue, which means that your emittive state is above the absorption state. And the last application is uh, bio-labeling. Um, and here we see an example where they inject the compound, and then it spreads throughout the body through the uh, vascular system, and it gives um, the contrast between different organs so that you can do uh, studies to see what's going on. With all of these, there are some complications. I'm going to talk about the first and last. The first complication is that LEDs, for most applications, if you want red, green, blue, you need to have Gaussian or uh, Lorenzian emission spectra, which is why a lot of people think about quantum dots for lighting in diodes because they are very uh, pure in their states. So we don't get a lot of tails if you have ideal ones. For uh, com uh, organic compounds, you tend to have a lot broader uh, lines, which I kind of had in the back, you get like vibronic peaks, which is one problem for organo, uh, organic vitamin diodes. And then for the bio-labeling, when you have skin, if I have my skin up like this, you can't see through it to this wall because light is absorbed or reflected. 
which means if we use organic uh, uh, iridium complexes, we need to have emission below around 800 nanometers, which then can penetrate into the, the skin for imaging purposes. What I'm going to talk about so this is infrared range, right? Yes. Already, 800 is infrared, right? Yes, it's near infrared. Um, through this, we want, we have our application and challenges. How can we resolve some of these challenges? I'm a computational chemist, so we can uh, take the organic compounds and try to manipulate the structure. And in literature, there's two uh, predominant features of this. It is functionalizing the coordinating ligands with electron donating or withdrawing, and this is typically uh, inductive effects, which are like uh, flowing te uh, tetraflowing methane uh, attached or uh, like a mean. So that's one way. The other way that I'll be look focusing on is uh, extending the pi conjugation, or as I stated before, Benzoanylation. And here's an example where we add pi systems onto a parent structure to make new structures, and then you can study these. So you can do this either experimentally or theoretically. I am a computational guy, so I'll be studying it um, through computational chemistry. And why is this advantageous over the typical um, what chemistry? Well, you, uh, organic, uh, sorry, computational chemistry, you can do high throughput, which means you can study hundreds or maybe even thousands of compounds that are potential to narrow them down to a handful that you can then have an experimental collaborator look at through actual studies and say, oh, these are decent, the, these half are not so decent, but we have uh, better um, candidates. And DFT, which is the uh, theory that we use to simulate these, can give us atomistic properties that then we can have in the back of our heads and say, we want to use these properties in the next generation of uh, compounds. So now I'll be starting uh, the main part of my talk where we have three studies where we do benzoanylation. The first is on the diamine. Uh, yeah, typically the NN ligand. So we focus on keep modifying this where the CN is kept the same, and we want to see what happens with the high, uh, the benzoanylation. So you've seen this before, and what this is describing is the uh, the splitting between the parent compound and the 1,3-dibutanine, where the symmetry of the HOMO and LUMO is just uh, looked at to describe if the HOMO of the uh, compound that's being benzoanylated either will go up or go down, which then would dictate the HOMO-LUMO gap. Let's look at this in a uh, little bit more detail, and uh, forgive me for the uh, blurriness, but here we are extending this portion and there's no angular node here, which means the state that will uh, couple is the LUMO and due to a home uh, LUMO LUMO, the new state will be lower in energy, which will decrease the um, HOMO LUMO gap, which is seen here. So from one to five, it decreases the homo lumo gap. Um, the one problem with benzoanylation somewhat is if you extend it too much, you change the character completely. If we look between compound one and six, we put <coughs> benzoanylation here and here, which this has now a large high conjugation system. And that char changes the emission character from a charge transfer, which means the homo, uh, the hole and electron are located on different parts of the molecule, goes now into a pi pi star. And you can see a dramatic change in the 
emission property, which this may not be bad for bioimaging, but it would be bad for uh, lighting emitting diodes because you do not have pure uh, light. So from this, I would like to go on to the second study where we look at uh, the CN ligand. And from this study and the first study, we come up with very similar conclusions theoretically when you do a, a, a homo, homo minus one, you increase the energy. When you do homo, homo, you also increase the energy because you never make a state in between two states that you're coupling, unless you have a third state. And we can uh, predict this for all of them. And from the emission, we also see that for eight and 10, when the pi conjugation system is very large, it emits with pi pi star, not charge transfer, which is uh, kind of supporting the idea if you go past three linear benzene rings, you're going to probably have a charge transfer state. And from this, I'll talk about the last paper that I'll be discussing, uh, where we did uh, benzene inhalation on the NN ligand again, and the results are very similar to the first two papers. So I will not uh, belabor the point too much. And here we can say, uh, we can tune the homo lumo gap by about a half of the electron volt, which uh, is pretty dramatic for organic materials because unlike quantum dots, where they're size dependent, a lot of these properties come from the conductivity. So benzoinhalation is a good tool to tune your uh, homo lumo gap and then turn your absorption and your emission. And here we see um, for a three linear system again, we have another pi pi star transition. Uh, with that, I would like to conclude. Benzoinhalation, uh, I didn't show absorption much due to the time constraints, but benzoinhalation can modify the frontier molecular orbitals, which then in turn modify the absorption and emission. Um, the site of benzoinhalation really determines how. So as a computational chemist, I can take a parent molecule, run VFT calculations, go back to the experimentalist and say, these are good points for benzoinhalation because the energies will go down which is what we're kind of looking for. We want to go under 800 nanometers. And um, then the last is uh, if you have too much pi conjugation extension, you'll go from a charge transfer to a pi pi star. And finally, uh, future work, um, we can take the compounds that we've already studied and jumble the CN ligands with the NN ligands and get even more combinations so that we don't have to come up with, our experimentalists don't have to come up with new routes to make ligands. They can just take the Legos that they already have and mix them in new ways to try and make new compounds. And then the last is introducing spinorbic coupling um, so that we can see the actual uh, oscillator strength to go from the excited state down to the ground state. With that, I would like to thank my group my advisor, which is a co-author, uh, co Brennan Gifford, Javed, Dr. Soon, and Bing Ching, which is also a co-author, and then for the computational resources, uh, NDSU CCAST. How many oh, Anyone was monitoring time? Excuse me. Was, was it less than 15? Uh, I wasn't okay. exactly measuring, but it was about right or even shorter. Okay. Yes. So you found that benzoinhalation has some effect on the absorption emission, but uh, how long you can extend this to change this tuning this emission property? Is there any limiting case or anything? So if you're talking about experimental results, I would say if you are ben uh, if you're putting like five rings on it, it would probably be better to find a different parent molecule that has uh, properties closer to what you want. 
than to keep adding rings because the more carbon you have, typically the more costly your system becomes. So for us, there's it not cost or whatever from the properties for. So as I said, I found that if you have three benzene rings together, or if there might be a nitrogen in it, then it will probably be a pi pi star transition. So if you have even more carbon, I would assume it would still stay a pi pi star. Why? Why is it the problem? So what? Let's it be pi to pi yeah. transition. Why should be charge transfer state? What? Um, so what kind of physical benefits it gives I as having this type of so type? charge transfer tends to have a longer lifetime in the excited state, so that. Uh, if you have pi pi star, they won't be as good as uh, like non limiting non linear optics, which is another reason why we we study these compounds. So lifetime is also important. And when I showed emission, they were always normalized. So like all of these are normalized, um, and if you notice here. This is very smooth, where this is pretty jagged. So you could also play with the uh, how bright the compounds are. So if you have a very long system, that may have more pathways for non-radiative relaxation, which then is not what you want in the applications that I was talking about. So you mean long means more than three? Yeah. But if an experimentalist says, I want to do four, that's that's up to them. Yes. Yeah, question. Um, who is your target people are you going to be hitting with this? Like, are they, how science? Well, I guess my question is how scientifically knowledge knowledgeable are those people? Which people? Um, um, the, the judges who he's presenting oh, the judges. to. So, I Should know one. Faculty members. I know one's from Al MSU, Alex Parent, and then from uh, one's from Mayville, and I think one's from Grand Forks. Yeah, so they have faculty from different universities, yes. okay. which are uh, in so, our neighborhood. Yeah, the scientific community, not in general. Yeah, yes. it, it's... You have, like, a scientific presentation for, kind yeah. of focus that this will be presented to ACS conference. So it's definitely aligned to the professionals rather yeah. than just brought out. Yes. And okay. I could try and bring more flowery things to it. I just have a lot to go through in 15 minutes. Yeah. So to add even more. Now I would just say that like if it was just for a more general knowledge, maybe just the introduction, try to yeah. capture those people's because by the halfway through your talk, they'll probably be on their phones or yeah. So thinking elsewhere. I might try and reduce the technical jargon because the three studies computationally have very similar results. Experimentally, they're different, which is why they're in different papers. But the three main results are in every paper. So I tried to hit home that. OK. No, but I, yeah, but I, I, it still seems like there's people that are well knowledgeable in the scientific community so that are going to be going there. So it's not a bad thing. That so you said that three papers only different because you say experimentally, I take it as synthesis is different. Or what is really different from experimental? So uh, the results experimentally, so the uh, which compounds have higher excited state absorption, which means like nonlinear optics. Higher excited state absorption, you mean higher larger energy or what do you mean higher? Or no, so transient absorption ah. can be different. Um, and the routes to synthesize these are different. I have um, the... But my question is... Like how to do it? Because I, I don't uh, want to be... No, I don't want you okay. to explain how they were synthesizing it. But my question is, uh, you said that you increase the uh, benzoanization and... In all cases, when you increase its redshifts, does it also deal with position where you do it? Yes, and in, that's in a, why. And I guess there's also probably different uh, di difference well, in this really papers, right? Um, it's not just the length of these molecules; it's also their position yes. in the ligands, right? 
So um, that was this point. Maybe I didn't drive it home enough, but the site of benzoinhalation determines the interaction. So if it's a homo homo transition, then it will decrease the homo luma gap. If it's a homo lumo transition, it will increase or vice versa. Well, again, when you say increase interaction, it's uh, oh yeah, that's it's not, kind of that's not inside, a, right? Yeah. But your output is that because of this change in interaction, you will have difference in the in the optical in the energy of the optical transition. Then then it's a little bit different focus for this point. And can you return back to your slides where you're explaining what's really causing these red shades? You were addre addressing this in two slides, I guess. Six, seven, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one, I, I think this was, yeah, but this will, good. So you were talking about something, uh, Luma, Luma, Homa, Homa, and I didn't really get what exactly Luma, Luma, Homa, Homa, what's really this uh, dashed lines mean. So here, if we go to the full size, it's a bit hard to see, and that's why I blew it up. If we look here, there's an angular, uh, uh, there's a node here, which means that well, one phase is here. First of all, what exactly are you showing on these smaller uh, bubbles? This? No, no, that, no. Okay. that. The big guys, this is your complex. Yes. And so, the small one is what? It's the, just a ligand, right? Yes, the three, one three dive. You, you just take isolated ligand. Mm -hmm. Where which having this uh, by, uh, by, uh, as a, uh, how it calls, which where you increase your conjugation or what kind of ligand you look at? There are so several this, ligands in your molecule, right? So this this ligand so just go to your structure. Go to your structure. So we use this. But, but can you go to your structure? Of, uh, because you have in five, six, or how many complexes, right? Yes. Where you do the change in uh, in just this ligand. Yes. So then, which which exactly ligand? So if we look at one and five, right? This is what is new. Mm -hmm. So if we take one three dibutamine, which is this compound with high, instead of having it connected here and here to the high, uh, carbons, you put in hydrogen. So we have a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, hydrogen here, here, and then this group. So we take this, we take that group, and we say, how do the frontier molecular orbitals match? So if, there, if this position here has a node, then the state that will interact will also have a node. If the lobe is centered here, then the homo or lumo that has no angular node will interact, right? So we can say here or, or here. there, but these have different phase. So let's say this is positive, this is negative, correct? Then if this here, has a node, then it will interact with that state. If it does not have a node, it will interact with another state. You mean having a node in a molecule, in an actual yes. so if we uh, look here, combined structure? This is one, this is five. This is where we're growing, right? So now there is no node here. It's one electron density. So there's no change in phase. If we look here and exclude the outer portion, it says it stays red the entire time. So there's no angular node, which means that this state will interact with this state. It will not interact with this state because the symmetry is not, it doesn't match. So it can't interact, which is why this is a homo, uh, lumo, lumo, interaction, and Lumo Lumo forces the new state to go below the old HOMO, so that's why it goes down by about 0.2 EV.
the problem is that it's completely unclear when, I mean, when you explain and spend like another okay. 15 minutes of explaining this thing, okay. I think it's kind of people can get it. But it was completely unclear what's exactly going on and what the small features are. Okay. And I'll... why they should have homa, homa, luma, luma kind of interaction, right? Is is completely, I, 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 so I don't know. Do you... For people who were never doing it, probably you never really yes, and I get think... what's exactly going on, right? So do you think adding a slide between wide study computation and the studies where I show the interaction of orbitals. Maybe you can, helpful. again, if you think that this is a very important point, right? So you probably can, can again, go to your structure, like say, okay, and now we want to explain mm -hmm. what really causing these shifts and, are they, and why they're not really consistently, because you expect, like, am I right that you're, Conjugation is increasing, growing from one to six. If you go complex one to six, so it's yes. not really right. And uh, you, you kind of think that if, like, just idea. Mm -hmm. So you increase in the conjugation lens. You're supposed to shift it to the red consistently because of the increase in the conjugation, like particle in the box model. Mm -hmm. But it's not coming consistently, right? Yes. So and moreover, you can say that your homa is kind of not affected at all. Right? But your luma is doing crazy things, going up or down and down or up and something like this, right? So probably you can go a little bit in the deep, if you really think that this is an important point, you can just look, kind of focus on this overall results, say, well, we see this kind of behavior consistently for homa, but not consistent for luma. And then the question is why, what's really causing it? We want to answer this question. And for this, we kind of make a model, simplified, artificial, whatever you can say, model of just this piece of the ligand mm -hmm. and see how much this, if, if, if orbital is, uh, if the electronic density is contributing from this piece, kind of what exactly responsible for changing this whole maluma. So little bit baby steps, uh, given a general idea what exactly this model is, right? And then you say, uh, and, and then nodes or whatever, and then overlaps or kind of interaction, whatever you call it, would be facilitated or will not happen. And if it happens, then then what happens with your luma? If they over or, or, or if they interact, then luma is going down, right? It depends on which states. So if it's luma, luma. Lumo goes down. Yes, but I, I think this is what you say. In, in all these cases, it's Luma Luma, not Luma Homa, right? No, so this is Homo, uh, homo Lumo, and it goes up. That's why this, and it, this is hot. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's four different cases that can happen. So again, yeah. looks okay, like you need, you need to refocus this slide, like maybe yeah. break it into two. And again, think uh, carefully think about timings, and yeah. you need extra time to explain it. Yeah, and I might not go one by one with the studies because they're so rep repeated that I might like pull. Yeah, yeah, you can just if this is your central point, you kind of explain this feature. Then you go, uh, can you go to the next uh, series, mm -hmm. and then you can just say that change in this ligand to slightly different one, you can call a name, right? Kind of results, like we apply the same methodology and we again see very consistent results for luma, luma, homa, homa, yes. going up or going down, and that's it. You don't need to, to, to go to the details anymore. Okay. The slide can stay the same, but you spend like really a couple of minutes, uh, seconds on it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Can you uh, go back to your motivation? Motivation. Yeah. I think it was good, but just maybe highlight it a little bit. So you're showing three examples, right? Yes. And for biological labeling, I think you explained very nicely why you want, why is it important. Like you really, your goal is to find such ligands which will move it to the red, right? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you said that other parameters are important, like lifetime, something else, something else. Maybe again, in your introduction part, you need to add this, saying that 
we interested in what, what specific parameters you are focusing on. So first it's energy, which we want to shift to the red as much as possible to get kind of infrared emission. Uh, lifetime, what else? I don't know, in, in, the, the emission, uh, how it calls the intensity of emission, right? Mm -hmm. The cross section of emission or something like this. Yeah. Is it bright or is it... And of course, it all, all the three or how many parameters will be, some of them or all of them will be more beneficial for this application or that application or that application, right? And then you probably can say, we will focus only on a question of the shift of the energy. We're not really considering lifetime or anything. Or maybe I'm wrong, because if you talk about the change in the charge transfer versus pi pi character, right? It kind of relates to the explanation of the change in the, you expect that then change in the behavior, uh, change in the nature will change the lifetime, right? Yes. So maybe maybe you also can, can say, and, okay. and briefly give some uh, intuitive ideas, how say quantitative, qualitative ideas on a, lifetime with respect to the nature of the orbitals. Kind of narrow down your focus, what exactly you, uh, what exactly your calculations uh, will be focusing on as an outcome. What you need to get as an outcome, uh, put it, put it into your motivation as, as kind of narrowing, the, narrowing down to very concrete question. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much again. And we have uh, last speaker, but not least, in the program, Fatima. You are invited to the stage. How long are you going to talk? She has like 15 slides. <laughs> I will stay for another 15 minutes, and if you will be not done by that time, I will be ready. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Around. <laughs> But don't be surprised if I'm leaving because I really need to run. Yeah. If audience is smaller, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Less questions, maybe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it should be like black slate advancing. Huh? Oh, it's my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> So uh, this is my own project. Uh, so far, I calculated a um, relaxation rate for uh, electron um, for two silicon nanowires uh, grown in 001 and 111 crystallographic direction. Now, uh, I calculated a relaxation rate for four and um, photoluminescence for the same models. Here is the outline. Uh, first, I'll talk briefly about the context and challenge, then methods. Uh, method section uh, includes only the procedure, what I did, not many equations, uh, like not many uh, theories. And then results, and finally conclusion. Uh, so we know silicon nanometers exhibit uh, optoelectric properties, uh, like band gap, radiative and non-radiative transitions, uh, charge carrier relaxation rates, uh, and all of them are dependent on momentum dispersion and on crystal contraction. Here is the uh, band structure. The reason I showed this uh, uh, band structure uh, because uh, I'll consider only four K points. So this band structure uh, uh, here, there are uh, 16 K points. And the next one uh, for first two panels, left panels, uh, there are four K points only. Um, 
if we compare the previous band structure and this one, we can see that the shapes of the bands are not changing much. Uh, so in order to save computational resources, we consider four key points. And the rightmost panel is the uh, balance band of silicon 100 on wire. And um, I, so here is the, this, uh, it, uh, hole can travel, since this is balance band, I'm considering hole. So hole is traveling, holes can travel from one key point to the different key point or one key point to the same key point. If holes travel from one key point to the same one, we call momentum restricted transition. And if a hole travel from one key point to the different one, then it is momentum unrestricted. I I have drawn a couple of them, not all of them. There are many parts. So, in order to calculate a relaxation rate, uh, we need to calculate a red field tensors. Uh, as I said, I'm skipping those theories, equations. Uh, so, in order to calculate red field tensors, uh, we need uh, three files. Um, Number one, coupling point, and uh, coupling, since we are considering um, uh, direct and indirect transitions, um, so there are two kinds of coupling files, coupling between um, orbitals of same k-points, and coupling between uh, states of different uh, k-points. I will describe later uh, in details. And number two, energy uh, of files, it's like symbolic name, but it considers the number of R states we are interested in. And number three, this is the MATLAB code. So there are two names here. <laughs> and uh, now, actually, it should be this one should be number two. So this one, <coughs> this file considers uh, uh, for each k point. Uh, we are interested in 80 orbitals. Since we are considering four k points, there are 320 orbitals. This is for silicon uh, 100. So, here, uh, this is the string chart how the orbitals are arranging. Here, in this, this bigger uh, file, like, uh, which contains all of the orbitals for four k points. So here, this is HOMO of K.4, and right above that, it's HOMO for K.3, and HOMO for K.2, HOMO for K.1, and then HOMO minus 1. Uh, on the other hand, this is LOMO for K.1, K.2, K.3, K.4, then LOMO plus 1 for K.1, and like it is uh, continuous up to 320 uh, steps. For silicon 111, uh, we are interested uh, in 50 orbitals, so total number of states in this bigger file is 200. This number, this one should be number one. Uh, this is right, but it was So here we can see the direct coupling. Couplings of orbitals at same k points. Mm -hmm. So the format mm -hmm. of the coupling file is our coupling dot number of k point dot uh, 001, 0001. And there are 892 coupling files for each k points for direct couplings. For each k points for indirect couplings, there are another uh, 892 files. So the format of these cup indirect coupling files are coupling dot k point number of k point to one to number of k point another one uh, number of k point two and then this is the number of uh, file. So and the number th number three uh, file was MATLAB code. If we run that code, then we will get uh, uh, this uh, red field tensor for the same k point for these direct coupling files. And from these indirect coupling files, 
we can get red field tensors for one k point to another one. Like uh, our red field tensor point two, uh, k point two to one, k point three to one, three to two, three to four. And so finally, after running the code, we have 16 red field tensors files here. And we combined all of these 16 here, this 5R file, this super tensor. Now I'm going to say, tell you uh, how to, how the um, matrix elements are arranged in this 5R uh, super tensor. Here, uh, this is not exactly the way uh, this uh, uh, time matrix elements are arranged. It is a little bit uh, uh, complicated. Like this one is a first element of this one. This is the sec uh, first element of this one. And this is the first of that one. And that is the first element of this one. And this one is the first element of this one. Now, after first elements are arranged this way, and then the second element of this one is here. And continue. Just, it is continued that way. And this is the third, uh, um, first element of this one. This is first element of what? The third one, support, point one, and it is continued this. Uh, now, once we have the red field tensor file, we can calculate the um, uh, electron and all dynamics. Uh, so for calculating uh, dynamics, we need uh, one more file that is penned out and different MATLAB code, here it is. So there are four files required here. Once all of them we have, we can calculate the electron and whole dynamics. Um, the figure is, I shall later <laughs> so put it here, but, okay. Uh, so once we can calculate the dynamic, electron and hole dynamic, after that we can calculate the photoluminescence. For calculating photoluminescence, we need five files, the red field tensors that are files that contains total number of orbitals and four optics file, band hour, and this <coughs> method. There should be another uh, one more name. Okay. Now, now we need to uh, arrange since we are uh, considering four k points, we have four Formester equation, and in order to correlate with the, in order to arrange similar to our retro, uh, the super tensor, uh, red field super tensor, uh, we arranged our four. Formaster equations this way, and this is Formaster equation, Formaster file for k point one, and it is diagonal. So Formaster for k point one, Formaster for k point two, three, four, and all the other el matrix elements are zero. So are you assuming that there's like no cross interaction? Or how can you say everything is zero? No interaction we are considering. So what would happen if there was? interaction is it even possible to have interaction or is it zero because it has to be zero it, uh, uh, honestly i don't know uh, can it, <laughs> uh, there are no violation of momentum conservation due to interaction with light so it is concern uh, um, assumed that interaction with light absorption and emission of photon keeps Electrons moment. Yeah. Six. Six. Although the interaction with phonon may change momentum of electron or hole for both. Right? Matthew? Is it what you a model? Right? Yes. <laughs> but this is with phonons, right? Of this, uh, what, what she's showing right now is interaction with photons. 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 So and what she showed before was interaction with photons. You you can have a spin flip. Wait, 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 wait. No, no spin here. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. 
Oh yeah, never mind. Yes. Okay. So I can get momentum of photon. <laughs> momentum of crystal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. So then you are saying by your formalism that it's an instantaneous jump and then it lets the crystal move. And then if it jumps again, it's instantaneous jump. And then it lets it move. Oh. Okay, this is the result, relaxation uh, time of electrons. Uh, this one is for silicon 100 and this is for 111. This result is published. Uh, sorry, wait, wait, can you return back to your uh, matrix? Only the slides. This one? Okay, so it's 4 by 4 because you have 4 by 4 key points, right? I mean, you have 4 key points. This is, this is not just 1, 0 here. This is 320 by 320 matrix. Yeah, so the yeah. zeros are zero matrix. Zero matrix is not okay. size. like zeros until it is 320. So this is 80 by 80, and rest of them are zero. And what is dictating the size of this matrix? Because each should be, uh, it should have same dimension like this one. This is 320 by 320. In order to run the code. And again, this 320 again, how you... Uh, uh, because how you calculate it with, with your four Because points? we are considering four key points. For each key points, we have 80. Okay. So 80 times four, 320. Is a combination of all... And why is it 80 yeah. for each key point? That's we, the we are interested in 80. Oh, oh, okay. So you, you also have limit yeah. for states which you consider. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Same as we all do. Okay. Yeah, certain number of okay. below or something. So this is zero means not only one zero. Yeah, I understand so that. Mean, <laughs> until three hundred twenty, it's zero. Uh, so then, what is you you talked about this and you jumped? What am I supposed to get from that? No, Which, not the how much the one? next slide. This one. Yeah, you were talking about this and then you went to the next slide. What am I supposed to get from this? Oh, this she is. No, she did. She combined them. No, she talked about this and then she went to the next slide. Oh, because it's the same idea, I guess, right? Oh, okay. Are you doing next? Now combining, <laughs> okay. combining. Do you have any particular question here? Like, do I need to explain or? What? I don't. I don't know what you. But your relaxation okay. time. It's actually based on your. You kind of combining two things together now, right? So you have interaction with, between photons, interaction with a photon, and you have interaction with photons mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. in in these different key points. Here it means like a, so. This is the dynamic calculation procedure. If we calculate, if we run this code, we get the relaxation rate. Yes. My and, my, my question is not. And this, what are you doing? It's mm -hmm. what is the result? Because I, you went to this slide and then you went to the next slide. Maybe the objection is correct, but what is the next slide? It's another thing like this. <laughs> and what is the title of the next slide? <laughs> I, no, I don't know. So, so let's uh, check what's the difference. One is elephant and another is whole. But this doesn't have any lines on it. it I didn't feel it. Because holes didn't deserve to have lines. <laughs> 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 I need to fit them. Like, oh, okay. These are fitted lines here. But this should be. I, I should. See, it's hard to connect them with lines. Because this is pre previous results. It's like um, I did last summer. And it is already published. I just put it here to show the electron but relaxation time. So then is it, it looks like there's a threshold of dispersion energy. And then it changes the rate at which it relaxes. Right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. like the red line, the red empty square up until like fit, uh, point 0.15. Okay, so what is this? Like this is all means, all means I mean momentum restricted plus momentum unrestricted. So one key point to one key point and one key point to another key point transition. Okay. 
So one so is all, with uh, same K all means, and another with a crossing. All K. means same plus crossing. different. Mm -hmm. Total. And this moment unrestricted key means just same. One K point one. So this empty uh, symbols are for momentum restricted for one Did K point to K point transition. Did we see this result sometime next like yeah. last semester, right? Mm -hmm. the same. So mm -hmm. that's the same. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And these are for all transitions, like momentum restricted plus unrestricted. So with so that all momentums, mm -hmm. the relaxing time is about the same. So if we consider all a transition momentum restricted plus unrestricted, then our electron relaxes faster. But was it the discussion last semester that it yeah. might be artifact because you're really including more pathways? Mm -hmm. Artifact, there was a question about maybe normalization. The question was, yeah, artifact or not artifact? Uh, yeah. Was it normalized? Should it be normalized or not? Yeah. Was it this addressed already yeah. or not? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Not yet? No. <laughs> It is not addressed yet. <laughs> okay. Any question? Please. I think that's a complicated way to. Yeah, last semester I taught during this time. Yeah. So this I is last semester, but this is this semester. This. <laughs> this is for whole. I calculated this is recent data. The same thing with whole. So now so. lifetime is the trends are flipped. Uh, no, actually the symbols are flipped here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that. Compared to previous one, the symbols are flipped. But that's why. You are oh, thinking. yeah. They, this they, is all transition. You okay. know, so also relaxes faster. Uh, I, I don't have a question. I already done, but it could be mm, very logical to rearrange. Yeah, I order. So these two figures could be like last two before conclusions because they summarize each point summarizes uh, dynamics mm -hmm. which you are going to present next. So it's like a summary of many calculations uh, is being presented before actual uh, calculations. So, uh, so effect of the momentum uh, and restriction is the same in electron and hole both together. Oh, from point of view of well, values, they are different, right? There you can see, like, in no, one I mean, case it's going from minus one to two, in the other it's from minus two. Those are different. Uh, different you mean, it's right, it's, uh, you see the difference between different cases. But one, in quantitative point of view, qualitatively they are consistently showing what? So for whole sent electrons, they are relaxing faster for all transitions. Coals are faster than electrons, independent when, uh, whether it's with the same K are, or different case. Holes? No, I'm telling that so. After, when the elect, uh, electron and holes will come back to the homo and lomo, right? They will relax. Electron will come back to the lomo, and holes will come back to the homo. So their relaxation times they are faster for all transitions, but I I did not think about which one is faster electron. Faster I in which case? In restricted, restricted or unrestricted? Unrestricted case, right? Both. All transitions. When all transition means restricted plus unrestricted. Okay. okay? So this one is faster. So what is your dissipation energy? So how much energy is dissipates? And so is that like your excitation energy? So if electron come from excited to the state to the ground state, it will dissipate energy. Right? This energy is that energy. To the ground or to the edge the, of the bed? Edge of the bed. No. So it's the difference between excitation and so it's like excitation minus homonomia. Mm -hmm. What homonomia? Yeah. For whole it is homo. Any question? Any question? Okay, this is the dynamics figure. <laughs> so this is now the intermediate steps which you do to get your 
to get your figures, you which you already mm -hmm. discussed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this mm -hmm. slide. No movies. It's <coughs> supposed to be earlier. Okay. Now this is the. You probably need to approach the keyboard and uh, hit the enter. Oh, there is a movie. So, so how so. you can post? So in this case, the hold of slow. Uh, yeah, I think it's quicker. Hmm. What does it mean? Like this trajectory is going kind of, kind of not just exponentially going to the low state, but doing some kind of. So what are the x? Yeah. What, what are x? the x? What is x and what is y? <laughs> Ah, oh, it's K probably, right? What is yeah. it? Yeah. Ah. X is energy and Y momentum. Y is energy and X is momentum? X is momentum, Y is energy. Yeah, I <laughs> think X is K point, K momentum. And then so it's actually the band, band structure. Mm -hmm. Changes with time. Uh, changes Occupation with of states across the band structure. Mm -hmm. Are changing the time. Yeah. So is your final state a superposition of momentum states? Is that why there's four blurs for the whole state? Can you with the genuine? Oh, okay, yeah. Initial state. Or when it relates to the homo, you see that there's like four blurry states. So I'm assuming each one of those is a one of the K points. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so yeah. so it's flat. because yeah, it's more flat. Yeah, it looks yeah, it looks pretty degenerate, so that's probably why they're all... Effective mass is very low. So you can kind of figure out what is the effective mass of hole and electron and compare. So which one is heavier? Electrons or holes? Holes. Yes, you are right. Yeah. Proton is heavier than electron. It's just slow over. Okay, and again, you just go to the slope. <laughs> As always, yeah. Any question? Oh. oh, you can run it from yeah. Advancer. <laughs> okay, now this is photoluminescence. I'm not. Oh, can you, can you, uh, I apologize, can you go back? So, uh, what, and maybe one, one back, one more back, because it has labels. So, um, what is the lowest excitation energy your system is reaching along this dynamics. So it starts, uh, you, you're excited from like minus two for holes and three for electron, about five electron yeah, excitation. Yeah, yeah. So, and you end up in the homo luma, right? Right. right. So mm -hmm. what, what's the homo luma here based on this figure? It's, uh, it looks like minus uh, minus one point something to one. What's a one point something minus one yeah. point something, so two point something, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, two points something something. Yeah, yeah. yeah two points something. Yeah. So the uh, lowest excitation is two point something. Mm -hmm. And emission from orange to blue, a transition of uh, uh, electron and hole combination from orange to blue would be associated with emission of photon of about uh, two point something electron volts. Correct? Mm -hmm. Good. Now let's go forward. So what is the band number of homo in these calculations? Uh huh? I mean, I saw the number in like I, I is 35. Yeah. 120. 120. 120. Oh, you are asking the number of uh, normal? Yeah. It, since the, the total states 320, uh, Lomo is 160. So in, in the, I saw a number is saying that our initial Lomo is 110, something like that. Oh, it's initial states. Number. Initial states. Initial yeah. states. Yeah. I know what you're asking here, right? Mm -hmm. So initial states, all 35 are considered an electron. Um, and where's the little... Can I, uh, sure. can I talk a little uh, addition? So these numbers are not 
Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a uh, number of orbital counting from lower edge of the active window. Mm -hmm. There could be, it could be like a thousand orbitals, thousand yeah. bands, but it's uh, whatever uh, is taken like 80. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just trying to get an idea of how big this is actually. I mean, hold it. I mean, yeah. the That's what I'm But I thought you said that you only have 80 states. And with 80, oh, 80 bands times 4. 320 states. Oh, so 35 and 110 also tell you about the momentum. Yes, yeah, so max in okay. this uh, window, in this range, highest possible excitation will be from 1 to 320. Oh, okay. And uh, IH 35, it's like uh, divided by 4, 10 band, 9. So from 9th band, keep. Uh, but so 110 means second k points and 30. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah, so it should be modular algebra. So mm -hmm. everything's yeah. mod 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't then 110 be in the. 110 uh, divided by the four. Occupied? Because 80 times 2 is 160. Mm -hmm. So that's when your unoccupied has to <laughs> start. Oh, I guess. Another. Is 3 to your feet or. Yeah. I probably was deceptive, everyone. I think uh, counting. I agent. Oh, they they started from, 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 from home. Okay. Oh. Okay. So yeah. one is counted from okay. home, and another counted from yes. the border. Upwards and downwards. Yes. Okay. But oh, you, okay. your initial your zero is home and luma, or one in one, one case it's luma, in the other case it's uh, the whole. No, no, no. no. Uh, home or luma excitation will be like one one, mm -hmm. and high, I was so I was wrong. Top oh, uh, excitation will be one sixty to one sixty. Yes. So here we can see this is home, no, this is home one, this is home. And there are like renumbered once again, wait, right? Mm -hmm. So this is number one for whole, mm -hmm. and upward uh, it was 35, I consider. And this is one <coughs> for electron, and I uh, I consider 110. So, okay. Okay. And, uh, I need to divide 110 by 4, then I can get which k point it is. So, maybe I'm a little bit confused there, Simon. So, initial oh, hole, so yeah, isn't it initial hole and initial electron shouldn't be in the same k points? No, initial excitation, no. do you preserve the k? Logically, no. yes. Logically, <laughs> yes. But uh, there is no ban, there is no, the code doesn't forbid to explore. Uh, situations when they don't oh, okay. cancel. Why is it? Because we are considering different. Oh. But if it's photo oh, excited. And you already agree that photo excitation doesn't change. Yeah, and your mm -hmm. fundamental assumption is photo excitation does not change K. So then you should impose that K does not change. Mm -hmm. Video, yes. They both started gamma point. E -E. Oh, okay, so this does. Different than huh? no, this is for let's, let's go to, to in, in the script is showing the different. This is now you go from Homer to Lima, right? This one, yeah. In this 35 and 110, that means they are different cables, but in video, it's showing that it started from the same cable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, video for different states, and this dynamic figure is for different states. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else? This is photoluminescence. Uh, uh, I think I don't have enough idea, but uh, if you ask me questions, if I don't know, then I'll simply say I don't know. <laughs> so, here, this is the time resolved radiative transitions. You can see here, this one, and this is the time resolved spectra for photoluminescence calculation here. Um, here, uh, yeah, four oscillator strands. So the equation, uh, equation on the top gives mm -hmm. an idea how you, what you are computing, but it doesn't include uh, summation over. It doesn't include momentum, so it, it probably uh, needs to be updated. Uh, this one. This also doesn't have momentum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this I, is oscillator strand. Uh huh. 
Do you not include population of the Homo Lumo? Probably this, this equation is not quite applicable here. Huh? I don't know what this is through time. Uh, let me play a jerk and ask a killer it's question. Times, so, it's right. so important. Mm -hmm. uh, when you show greenish figure, I think your lowest excitation right was two point something. Mm -hmm. So it uh, it should emit at lowest optical no, emission should be at like two point three electron volts. No, and here you are showing ranges from minus point five to. 1.5 on the left and in the right panel from minus 2 to plus 2. So you're not showing range which would display most uh, important optical transition. Mm -hmm. So I need to include brand characters. You increase the range. Because it's probably not just a slightly transparent range. Can you speak to some more characters? The equation is not applicable, right? With, it's is not it, what is she's really calculating. So you do... This, this is not wrong, but it is for a little different approach. You do look at population. Yes. That's, I don't have much knowledge yeah, about problem. Yeah, <laughs> so how you, uh, how you include your population? You take Homa minus Luma population? Or, or what? Ex because you, you find the slightest range between Luma and Homa, right? At the moment. At the specific moment, right? To the next slide. Yeah, whatever the occupied states are. So whatever the oscillator yes. strength is. No, no, you, you, you take, at the moment, whatever, T1, right? Mm -hmm. You yes. have your energy 1, energy 2, or whatever, energy home, energy luma, right? Mm -hmm. And you call, and of course, the orbitals, and you calculate the oscillator strength. And then you multiply by the population. Mm -hmm. The occupation of a state, that's certain. But which state? You, you, because you find the difference between them. Like, it's too involved. So how you involve the population yes. then? But the transition it's energy is the energy difference. But the emission that you see is... Fatima wants to interrupt everyone's attention to equations here. Okay. So this one is... Uh... No, no, just equations, no, not figures. It's oh, exactly so what you are... What you I'm thinking of emission, this one. This idea is number of orbitals, transition between two orbitals, A and Z, and this is the total. So you take the difference between population, right? right. Of home and human. Yeah, this was my question. So this uh, difference in the curly brackets is difference of occupations for valence and conduction band. It's the condition of condition. For given, uh, so or, or but shouldn't be they equal to each other to really be the maximum? Uh, no, this and term holes and all electrons collapse. This term will be maximal if there is an inversion of population, if electronic orbital is occupied and no, no, the orbital is empty. If it will be one and one or zero and zero, there will be no transition. But holes are empty by default. Well, um, <laughs> state. Orbital in the valence band must have occupation. So you should have a hole in the homa, and you should have an electron in the luma. Right. And then they collapse. Then if your homa is not having a hole, they cannot collapse. Exactly. So it should be inverse, inverse population. But it's a standard term for lasers. You call population inversion of population. It is exactly what you are telling. When electron is on Luma and hole is on home. Inverted population. But your, your population are not inverse of anything. They're just regular population as you get it. But because population no inversion in ground state. When uh, there is a electron in uh, homo and there is nothing in Luma. And if they are inverted, if there is an electron on Luma and nothing on homo, population is inverted and system is ready to emit. Oh. Same thing because if that term is equal to two, if I'm where if it, the homo is filled and lumo is not, it's equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And any combination between that will give you a float number between right. zero and two. Yes. So then you, your, your row is like side squared times side squared to get like. Uh, what's it called? Upside squared. 
or is it like the dive? Is it this way, or is it this way? It's just the transition energy between like LUMO plus Y and HOMO minus X. Well, occupation. He's asking no, occupation. You guys asking about occupation rule, sub GG. And oh, never mind. So, do you find like the expectation, or do you do like the dia diabetic credit? What? Or, like, you have your cat draw this way, gives you number, this gives you matrix. With like side and side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I forgot your question, I am ready to answer. So, you are speaking on the language of density operator. Density operator can be represented in a basis. If you represent density operator in a basis of orbitals, if you use summation of terms with cat and bra for pair orbital times expansion coefficient, which is a number. And this number is an element of density matrix. Okay, so this but is we here here wait, wait, wait. we neglect intentionally off diagonal elements of density matrix. We keep only occupations, only diagonal expansion coefficients for the density matrix. Does it answer your question? Yes. Good. So I'm just wondering, did you uh, consider the momentum? Or because I saw that when you calculate the homo hole is dispersed in a different. Momentum, but electron is localized on the two specific momentums. So, did you conserve the momentum during these uh, calculations? No. Because for recombination, isn't it necessary to hold an electron in the same momentum? Well, the I'm not sure about the strength. Would just be zero then. Hmm? The oscillator strengths would just be zero. It's expected, right? You ex expect that if you have different k's, then your solid strength should go zero. Yeah. So the um, oh, equations okay. that, that uh, is being shown here do show indices i, j without momentum. Momentum should be added there. But due to symmetry that is originally introduced into uh, oscillate, oscillate. optical transitions, only those that keep the same momentum, the same momentum will be non-zero and will enable optical transitions. Okay. I'm just curious, if you really calculate these terms, would they really be very close to zero or not? Just for Because again, your symmetry should be hold for the DFT calculations as well, right? So then if you include these non-zero terms, I mean, uh, include these cross terms, you should just get very, very small. Of course, you will not get zeros. You will get numerical errors anyway. So you will, but the question is, would you really be see something like 10 to the minus, I don't know, 6 minus 10? It's really interesting to check. <laughs> Hold on. So technically, you can include into this procedure the transitions with different case. Right. And check whether these transitions will provide you very, very small oscillator strings. In other words, including them should not change the result at all. Yes. Or you will include and see very big difference, which means something wrong with your code. Or it will be a big discovery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, violation of momentum conservation. And next, this is for silicon 111. I consider the same initial steps for this. So. And the Y range should be expanded as well, right? Yeah. It was expanded, but I, don't, I didn't see any feature. Even if there is nothing, it, it, it's okay. better to, to show for consistency. How do you get negative emission? Mm -hmm. Another discovery. Okay. <laughs> Absorption. Yeah. Negative Maybe emission is I either absorption or anti-photon. Um, Opportunity to improve the world. <laughs> so, this is uh, dynamics of excitor 
electron hole pair. Right? This one. And this is the um, integral integration. Wait, 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 wait. Let's uh, focus on blue figure first. And, uh, okay. So it's occupations of uh, electron and hole multiplied by uh, energy difference, right? So it just, just shows as uh, excitation relaxes, including all uh, involved electron hole pairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is the integrated emission. If we consider this one with the one for silicon zero zero one, we can see that um, this is the more intense than silicon. It is not on well, well, It's very strange what is on, on the right panel. What, what are X and Y and how they are obtained? This is wavelength, and this this value is times ten to the five. And this so is something has to be improved in this figure. I'm sure it's wavelengths, maybe it's electron ball. <coughs> Nanometer. But I, I see what it's saying. But if you look on the numbers, 0.5 nanometer does make a lot of sense. This is times ten to the power five. Mm -hmm. Oh, ten. Uh, yeah. oh, ten to the plus five, right? So plus it's actually five, yeah. then what is it? Infrared. Super. So it's super, super, super infrared. infrared. But your gap is open or closed in this case for, for, for this system. I think you looking on the systems which have open gap so, around so one electron, more than one electron yeah. volt, right? Mm -hmm. No, but it looks like yeah. it's half the half to a quarter of EV. Hmm? From her blue plot. Yeah, blue, but we're looking, looking on the right plot. Yeah, but what is. The value is 12. Uh, what it is? Uh, 5 12, to the 10 for 50,000? Uh, yeah, this is 50,000? No, so uh, it's 4,000. Because it's 0.5. So you do 10 to the 4th. So that would be. So 2.5, 50,000. Oh. Oh. It should be 4,000. Uh, 4,960. Oh, 4, 4, 4, 4, it's 40,000. Because it's 10 to the fifth. 4.5, yeah. 10 to the fifth. It's the same as 5, 10, 10, 10 to the fifth. So I'm assuming that maybe it's supposed to be 10 to the fifth. So how, how this figure was obtained? Mechanical. So it's a deep infrared. Which, which part no, of the. No, 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 Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> Probably this is wrong. Oh I don't know. I need to check. Right now, it, 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 it looks like so, uh, so your no. bluish no. stuff is uh, matrix, mm -hmm. and uh, you integrate along one dimension and keep uh, dependence on another one, just by summation, right? But maybe you flipped mm -hmm. and uh, integrated yeah. over the opposite direction. I think so. I checked so this one, this one, needs, like exit six, this one needs to be rechecked very carefully. It looks like mm -hmm. uh, indis uh, two indices were flipped. Mm, yeah. So you have disagreement between blue and blue. I mean, right and left panels do not agree, this, right? This axis should be flipped. Not not uh, axis on the image. Axis yeah. during the procedure when you compute integration. Or you're saying that intensity should be on the bottom and uh, right on the top? Intensity that should be. Sense. Intensities will be uh, x and frequency will be y, and time should be integrated out. Maybe right now that she was integrating something different, yes. not time. <laughs> well, I do not know, but there is a okay. suspicion. Is it the last slide? No. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So consider the following. Relaxes faster for all transitions in their song. So, okay, but thank you. Does anyone have steam for more questions? No. So, in conclusion, what you said, there has an additional pathway in indirect transition. What's that additional, additional path? 
Many thanks to everyone for supporting discussion. If you were taking uh, critical notes, you can uh, submit them to authors. And uh, we are meeting next time, Tuesday, 4 p.m. with this uh, first uh, rough draft of uh, Sunnyvale uh, poster. Can you? Is it open? So uh, you take in 4K quality, but is that it? 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 Is